Hey guys, it's Coach Zach with Ultimate Baseball Training. Today's video, we're going, to, we're going to talk about six key things that I wish I knew when I started pitching. Let's get going. The first thing we're going to talk about today is mental over mechanical. I feel like so many times that if anything while we're pitching goes wrong, it's just so easy to, to kind of use that crutch and say, oh, well, I didn't break my legs. I didn't break my hands soon enough. I didn't. My leg. My leg lead wasn't good enough. I, I didn't release the ball right. When in all reality, everything could be right. We just kind. Of, we just use that as a crutch just to make ourselves feel a little bit better about what happened. You know, mechanics are going to develop over time, just purely based on on we on getting older. You know, you're going to grow into your body, and the more you grow into your body, the the stronger you're going to be, and your your body is going to work differently. But one thing that we have absolute control over is the mentality that we have on the mound. If we're confident in, in our pitches, it's going to make so much different as if you know, your catcher calls a fastball and you're, you're hesitant to throw that. You can have the same pitch in the same location, but if you're confident in it, it's going to, it's going to play so much different. And the hitter is going to see how confident you are. So you know, just whenever you're on the mound, just, you, you have to know that you're better than the other team and you have to be confident in everything that you do because ultimately that has so much so much more importance and impact on, on your game than we, we often realize that it does. Uh, the next point we're gonna move into is just doing anything you can to disrupt timing, uh, especially for uh, the younger players who, who still pitch and they still hit. You hear so many times that a hitter, that hitting, hitting is timing. So anything as a pitcher that you can do to disrupt that timing, whatever it may be, is ultimately going to give you an advantage over the hitter. Um, so whether that you see plenty, plenty of guys uh, in the major leagues right now where, you know, they, when they lift their leg up, they, they kind of pause or they spin towards second and just anything that you can do just to, to get that hitter a little bit off balance, even the slightest bit, because when you, when guys, especially when guys are throwing hard, the hitters are not just sitting back and trying to pick out that pitch and they see it. They, you know, they, they have to expect it. They have to be on time. They have to be balanced. So anything, obviously, we can do to disrupt that is going to give us a benefit. And it even goes into, you know, varying your times with, with uh, you know, hitters or runners on base where, you know, if you come set in the stretch for a two-second hold for six innings, the hitters are going to pick up on that, but you know whether you're going with a, a leg lift or a slide step, the, the, they're not going to be able to pick up on that, on that very quickly. So the more you can disrupt their timing, the more successful we're going to be. Next point we have is uh, is a big one. Um, oftentimes, especially at younger ages, we we fall into patterns, we fall into routines, we don't mix our pitches very well. You know, as, how many times have have you heard 3-0? He's going to throw a fastball or O2, here comes the breaking ball. If the hitter expects that, it doesn't matter how good of a pitch it is. If you're waiting on that, you're going to hit it. So, you know, maybe mix in, mix in a 3-0 changeup or a 3-1, 3-2 changeup just to get the hitter off balance a little bit. Because all you have, once you do it once, they 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 have that in the back of their mind, and you know they they have to be thinking about that at all times. Because um, it does it doesn't take a great hitter to 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 know if you're pitching to a, a certain lineup in the first 13 batters of the game, the first pitch you throw them is a fastball. It doesn't take a great hitter to understand that that's what's going to be coming, and you can make a great pitch and get beat with that great pitch just because you you didn't allow yourself to mix pitches. You allowed yourself to fall into a routine, something that was so easy for the hitter the hitters to pick up on. So I would just recommend you know talk to your pitching coach, talk to your catchers, and just making sure. That, you, that you're kind of keeping track of your pitches and really remembering how, how, you, how you, you got outs with certain hitters and certain innings and just trying to make sure you mix that up game to game and just that way no one really can get a, a grip on, on how you're trying to execute pitches. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is uh, knowing how to use uh, your lower half. That's something that I had zero concept of. Um, so I pretty much got to high school um, and then it changed. It changed the way I pitch for you know since every day since then. So uh, we we often we try to think about throwing so hard that we think oh the stronger my upper body is the harder I'm going to throw. Well that has a little bit to do with it, but 
we don't realize how much stronger our lower half is. It's just like weightlifting, you know. If if you have like the slightest break in form, you, you know your weight is going to go down. So when pitching, it's the same thing. You know, if you're opening up your hip and not letting your hip lead down the mound, your your velocity is going to is going to decrease. And so the more we can we can try to work on you know our our back knee drive or front hip lead or our front leg leverage when we land and the more we can get uh, fundamentally sound with that the better we're going to be or the healthier we're going to be and the harder we're going to throw so you know really try to make that a priority as soon as you can and you I promise you you'll see it elevate your game the more and more you go on. Uh, the next one we're going to talk about is is my favorite one uh, learn to pitch inside I know we get Especially when we haven't pitched all that much, we get we get a little bit timid trying to go inside because we don't want to hit anybody and we don't really have a good good feel for that side of the plate. But the quicker you can can feel confident in that pitch, the better off you're going to be. You know, as a hitter, if you're trying to go outside outside, he can cut off half the plate and he can take 17 inches of the plate to to eight and a half or nine inches. I mean, he is at so much more of an, of an advantage. You know. The quicker that you can learn and be, feel comfortable pitching inside and commanding the inside part of the plate, it's going to make a world of difference. You know, they're going to, your hitters are going to back up off the plate because they don't want to, they don't want to get jammed, they don't want to get hit, and it's just going to open up everything else, all your other pitches, all the other locations. And if, the biggest thing is don't be afraid to hit somebody. If you hit somebody with conviction going inside, that's fine. But if, if, the second that you know you hit somebody because you're not confident, in it, that's that's different. But you know, if you have confidence and you have conviction on that pitch, and a pitch gets away from you and it hits, it, that's okay. Because the next time they're going, you know, they're going to obviously they're going to remember that, and they're not going to stand as close to the plate. So at that point, that's where we can open up the outside part of the plate a little bit more. So that's a really big key thing that I would recommend. Um, you'll instantly see the results, and it'll give you a lot more success. All right, the last thing I'm going to talk about today or in this video is. I've already mentioned it two or three times. It's pitching with confidence and pitching with conviction. It's so important from a pitcher standpoint just to be confident in every single pitch that you throw. You have to be confident that you, you know that you're better than the hitters. It's a it's a game within a game, pitcher versus hitter. You know, so the the, the more you beat the hitter, the better your team is going to be. And obviously, every time every time that you're on the mound, you know you want to win. So, and the more confident you are the more confidence your, your fielders are going to be because they can see when the body language is down and that gets them down. So, you know, the more upbeat, the quicker you can be, the more confident in all your pitches you can be, it's going to help everybody around you. It's going to be contagious. Um, and another, another big point in this is because, you know, the more confident you are in, in your pitches, the better they're going to play. So you could have the same pitch. So let's just say you could have a fastball down and, down and in to a, to a hitter. If you're not confident in that, it's not going to play the same as if it was the exact same pitch. If you were confident, you did throw that pitch with conviction. So the hitter can tell. The hitters can tell. You know, whenever you're you're not confident in a pitch, and they they feed off of that. So, you know, whether you have to whether you have to fake it or whether it's real, the next time you pitch, just make sure you you have confidence in everything you do and every pitch you throw has a purpose and has conviction. That's all I have for you guys today. I uh, hope. I introduced some points that you hadn't really thought about before that you can help implement into your game. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe so that way you don't miss any more videos that we have coming out for you guys soon. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.